So we're in the grey ore mines of North Wales. This is a very, very strange and interesting place. And I've come here really because I read that there were some giant artifacts here. And this is what I really wanted to have a look at. But also the fact that this is a 4,000 year old Bronze Age copper mine. And to make the bronze, they would have had to bring the tin up from Cornwall. So there was a, a whole network linking this place with Cornwall. They, they found copper and bronze axes in places like uh, Norway and different parts of Europe. So this does suggest this is a very important site. Obviously before that, the flint mines with Grimes Graves was, was one of the other trading centers of ancient Britain. But we're gonna go into the caves here. There's five miles of caves we've dug out. Uh, starting around 2000 BC and possibly much older and um, we're going to sort of get as far into them as we can on the on the tour they provide here and have a look at some of these artifacts to see who was really doing this were there really giants involved because we know there were giants and there's certainly legends of giants all over this part of Wales here's just some of the axes that have been found this one's 4,500 years old found in Degenwy, North Wales This is a bronze pal stave, again 3,500 years old, found on the beach in Landudno. This is again 3,500 years old, found on the beach in Landudno. Here's another bronze pal stave, 3,500 years old, actually found here at the mine. Look how beautifully worked that is. And also a socketed axe. 3,000 to 2,500 years old, found near Paidu, North Wales. Again, another example of the incredible metal working that was taking place in this part of Britain. They questioned how they moved this much bronze out of copper around Britain, and there's evidence now of all the huge Bronze Age boats they found here, which suggests they were using the waterways, they were using the coasts, and they were moving it around different parts of Europe like that. So that's another aspect which has been overlooked. Even in South Wales, near Newport, they recently found a very ancient boat, and uh, many have been found all over Britain. Here's some of the bronze scraps. Here's some of the tools they were using to create the bronze. With more examples of some bronze and copper slag at the bottom there. Look at these, these are amazing. This is a bronze spearhead, 3,500 years old. Absolutely beautiful piece. We have a bronze dagger, bronze short sword. A bronze spearhead, a hoop earring. Look at these beautiful pieces, absolutely amazing. Just a handful of what we've got here at the Great Ore Mines in North Wales. To the mine. So you can just see behind me some of the actual mine that's been dug out here at the Great Ore Mine. And, uh, and so we're gonna head down now. We're gonna go and look carefully at, at what we see here. But I'm, I'm looking for the artifacts. That's what fascinates me. So they basically use stone and bone tools to actually work and actually carve out all these incredible mines here. It's just, it's really quite remarkable. And it's only rediscovered in 1987. Very recently, it's only opened a few years later. So this is absolutely amazing. It's a scheduled ancient monument now. It's one of the most important in Britain, really, potentially the world. And it reminds me of the great copper mines of ancient North America and the Great Lakes. Was there a connection? Was it, were, there, were these their rivals? Because this was po possibly happening at around the same time. And we know that the giants were involved there. So we're gonna head inside now. We're gonna actually go inside under the ground um, to get a sense of what it was like for the people who were working these mines. So we're just heading into the mines now. The great copper mines of ancient North Wales going back 4,000 years. And you can see how much it's actually been removed here throughout here. It's absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible amount of work here. 
so there's very narrow passages here there's not much room to get through even for small people and the ore or the mineral they were looking for was called malachite that was the name of the, the ore basically and let's just go down these steps here as we get further in God, it gets cold in here, it's really cold, strangely cold as you get further down. And although only 200 meters is now open to the public, there's actually five miles of this throughout the whole place. So imagine how much that is, five miles. And we're, you know, just what I've seen here is impressive. This is a couple of hundred meters. So, this really is a masterpiece of engineering, especially with the tools they had then. And all the copper, virtually throughout Europe, would have come from here. All the bronze would have been made, combined with the tin of Cornwall. And just next to this as well, we have a megalithic site. There's actually a dolmen or a cromlech just next to the entrance to the cave. So we have to ask, was that here first? And they decided to dig in honor of the great kings that were buried there or was it placed there during the construction did one of the great leaders die and they built a grave a dolmen in honor of him we just don't know that but we're going to go and have a look at that right after this so how they lit the cave would have been interesting i guess candles obviously Good job of wearing this hard hat because I've hit my head about six times. So we're, as the sign says, we're 60 feet below the surface now. And they go 150 feet below where we are now. Just down there, it's a passage that's not particularly well lit up. Let's just keep going. So as the sign says, you can see that here actually, some of the mine waste is cemented together by calcite, formed by the rich lime water, very interesting. So just down here, apparently, it's an extent, extensive labyrinth of prehistoric tunnels that are too small for a normal sized human to get through. I wonder if JJ could fit through here. Do you want to give it a go? Mm Right below us, there's a deep hole going about 50 feet down, right below my feet. Thank God this metal grate is here. There's some evidence of stones that have been found as well. So apparently down here are the remains of a cat with blackberry seeds. The sign here suggests it could be some kind of ritual sacrifice to the ancient gods who reside in these tunnels, probably to bring them good luck. So you can just see behind me you see behind me here the extent of just one of the chambers here they've lit it up beautifully it's like a sort of you know ancient prehistoric disco 
but it just shows you the extent that this is potentially the largest cavity of mining anywhere in prehistoric Europe, even the world. And you can see how much work has gone into this to move all these diff all this copper ore out of here. It's really quite incredible. You can just see how much there is. It's incredible. Let's get a closer look. You can see just that little gap of light down there. That's how deep it goes, at least 60 feet below us. And if we look at the whole mine, it's amazing. It goes 100 feet back probably a hundred feet high. So we're coming to the end of our tour here, but we're just about to head out. But this has been a very interesting experience, coming deep into these mines. I get a sense of peace here, and calmness and coolness, something really special about it. But we're gonna now go and look at some of the artifacts that I've been wanting to see for many years, to see if giants were really involved in this particular mine. This is very interesting. Look at this. This is a piece of rock where they actually made the ax heads or the, the hammers. Look at the size of that. And that's my hand there. Yeah. And that's obviously where they cast an ax head. So to me, this is evidence of extreme sized people. This is very, very interesting. So just behind me here, this is evidence of giants in my opinion. This is like a cast of where bronze would be poured. And they would create the great hammers and the tools to mine this site. They would have had to come up from Cornwall, but that's where the tin came from, combined with the copper from right here at the Great Orme Mine. And we know all along the west coast of Britain there were megalithic sites, there were giant legends, and there have been bones and skulls and skeletons of extremely tall individuals being found here all along from the Cornwall all the way up to North Wales, way up to Scotland even. So is this evidence of that? Or is this something else completely different? But to me, this is just a fine example of what we're looking at here, some evidence I was hoping to see. So these are some of the tools that the copper miners were using. And I must admit, if these are tools, these are big, all of them. The ones on the lower shelves, and the ones on the bottom, look at the great egg shapes there. That's like about a foot long. I wonder if these are the giant artifacts that we've been talking about. If you look in the back there, some very, very large ones. And down the bottom there, it's really disorganized in here. I'd like to get in there and take a closer look. I'll just put the hat next to it, just to give an idea of size because that is very big, very, very big. It's almost a third bigger than the actual crash helmet there. After its formation, the limestone came under immense pressure from movements in the Earth's crust. Copper-bearing minerals filled these cavities and cooled down, forming veins of copper ore. So I just got chatting with the people who work at the Great Ore Mines, and indeed the ones here are 30 kilogram hammers. Now these wouldn't have had a wooden handle, they would have had a rope around them, they would have swung them against the rock, and st but still 30 kilograms. One of them weighs up to, in American terms, 64 pounds, so these are huge. So let's get a closer look at these again, I just want to make sure we've got these on record. The larger ones are down in this corner. And you can see on the bottom shelf, as I showed earlier, indeed there are, but this one here, this is the one. This is the 64 pound or 30 kilogram one. So that is a monster. Absolutely huge. So there is some speculation that to wield a hammer this big, even if it's on a rope, if it was made and to have wood on it, it would be a nine foot long wooden pole would be the handle, <laughs> nine foot. And so someone must be 12 foot tall would be able to then wield that. No one smaller could even possibly think about doing that. So that is just incredible in its own right. 
but then there are so many here. There are over 3,000 of these hammers have been found. Some of them are massive, oversized pieces. There's a couple more we're gonna have a look at just up there. Were these giant stones also used as hammers? This one even has some kind of cut mark in it. Look at that. So as far as I'm concerned, we have found evidence of giants here. We found the large stone that had the, what looked like a bronze cast in it, which would have been a huge piece, a huge axe or hammerhead. And we've seen the stone hammers. So I'm weighing 30 kilos, right up to 64 pounds, which is three times, four times what you could yield normally, at least. With the great ore mines behind us there, and this rocky slag here. And also the mounds here, which suggestions the mining took place. And over in the distance, just behind that mound, that is where the Neolithic dolmen resides. So this is the Letter Phileas dolmen here on the Great Orm mines, right next to the entrance. It fascinates me because this isn't even the oldest thing here. It was a Neolithic tomb, and this was here, really, it must have been before the Orm mines were constructed. But rituals may have taken place here, they're really not sure, but there's a sort of natural rock mound here next to it. And there's more being discovered here. There's a bone tally from Kendrick's Caves, which is being discovered. A horse jaw bone from Kendrick's Cave as well, which is nearby. And um, this is just one of those many dolmens we find in the area, and it would have had a mound over the top of it. So these bones, they've got tally marks and zigzag carvings on them came from the Great Orm area upon this part of the landmass. So these bones are 14,000 years old and they were found here in Kendrick's Cave on the Great Orm Peninsula. And this does suggest that it could go much, much further back this place than originally suggested, i.e. the Bronze Age. We already know there's Neolithic tombs, probably three or 4,000 BC to find something that's 14,000 years old, old or 12,000 BC. This is on par with Gebekli Tepe in Southeast Turkey. It really does suggest there's more to this place than meets the eye. And it was a sacred place known by many different cultures over many, many millennia. Whether it was the burial place of one of the giant miners, we don't know. But it's certainly fascinating that we have Neolithic burials here alongside the Bronze Age mines.